In this example, we're given vectors C and D, given as linear combinations of the unit vectors I and J. We want to find the sum of the two vectors. Let's begin by identifying the two vectors on the coordinate plane. Notice both vectors have their initial points at the origin, the point zero comma zero. The blue vector here has its terminal point at the point negative six, seven, which means this would be vector C expressed as negative six times a unit vector I plus seven times a unit vector J. In component form, we can simply write this as negative six comma seven. The terminal point of the red vector is the point two, negative five. Notice how this would be vector D written as negative two times a unit vector I minus five times a unit vector J. In component form, we would just have two comma negative five. So notice how these vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of vectors I and J as well as in component form. If we do want to show the sum of these two vectors using this form here, we would add the scalars of negative six and positive two. To find the scalar, we'd multiply by the unit vector I of the sum, and then we'd find the sum of seven and negative five to find the scalar that would be multiplied by the unit vector J of the sum. We can also think of vector I and J as variables and think of combining like terms. But to show some work here, let's say vector C plus vector D is equal to negative six plus two times a unit vector I plus seven plus negative five times the unit vector J. So simplifying, we have vector C plus vector D equals We'd have negative four times I plus two times J. Again, we can probably skip showing this step here by thinking of combining like terms. Negative six I plus two I is negative four I, and seven J plus negative five J is positive two J. Let's take a look at this resultant vector on the coordinate plane. The black vector we see here is the vector C plus D, or the resultant vector. There are two ways to show this sum on the coordinate plane. One method is to take vector D and place the initial point of vector D at the terminal point of vector C. If we do this, it would look like this. And notice how the resultant vector, or the sum of the two vectors, has the initial point at the initial point of vector C and its terminal point at the terminal point of vector D. The second method is to use vector C and D to form a parallelogram to form the parallelogram, we would copy vector C here. And notice the sum is the diagonal of the parallelogram where the initial point is at the origin. I hope you found this helpful.